Okay, let's talk about early signs of POTS. There is a disease terrorizing young women, and most doctors have never heard of it. What is POTS? POTS stands for Postural Orthostatic Tachycardia Syndrome. For those of you who don't know, I have POTS. I know the name is ridiculous. Yes, it's a real thing. It's a chronic illness. So every person is different. Every person with POTS is different. Hi, I'm Isla. I have POTS, and this is everything I do before I get out of bed in the morning. How do you know if you have POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome? 0.2% of the population of the UK are affected by postural tachycardia syndrome, also known as POTS. That's every 2 in 1,000 people, and the majority of those are females aged between 15 to 50 years old. POTS is due to an abnormal response in the body's autonomic system, which is our autopilot system that controls things such as our blood pressure, our breathing, and our heart rate. What happens in someone with POTS is that that doesn't work properly for them. So when they stand up or move around, their heart rate may increase and they may get heart palpitations. This can lead to them feeling dizzy and sometimes even fainting. Other symptoms may include headaches, brain fog, blurred vision and shortness of breath. It's unsure what actually causes POTS, but in most cases the person has suffered from a viral infection such as COVID or something stressful on the body such as pregnancy or surgery. It can take time for POTS to be diagnosed and symptoms are very similar to others. So what really is POTS? I'm going to talk with Jess Heather, a teenager who suffers from POTS, to find out more about the condition. This is Jess Heather and I'm going to find out about her POTS and how she deals with it in her day to day life. So Jess, how has your life changed since being diagnosed with POTS? My life has drastically changed. I used to have 100% attendance at school, I used to go every day, but now I can only go to college once, twice a week if I'm lucky can't really do anything I used to do. What did you used to do? I used to walk for dogs, many clubs like gymnastics, go swimming, running. Can't do any of that now. Yeah. <laughs> How does that make you feel about that? Um, for most people it would be hard, but for me, I can't change it. So yeah. there's no point being sad about something. Because you have no control over it, so yeah. like, why be sad over something you can't change? Yeah. And was it difficult to get diagnosed? It wasn't too difficult for me. They knew I had long COVID and then they were like, well, you probably have POTS as well. But for some people, it can take up to seven years That's to get diagnosed. Time. Yeah, it's a long time. So for me, it took about a year. And so you were quite, quite lucky for that? I was quite lucky. So what is POTS in your words? In my words, I always describe it as postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. Posture means, obviously, your posture. Orthostatic is from sitting to standing. Tachycardia is a false heart rate syndrome. It's a syndrome. Yeah. Okay. That is, that's that's such a nice way to put it, it. Yeah. Because like those big words are like, oh, yeah. scary. And then you word it like that and it's like, okay, that's actually yeah. understand understandable. And I can understand, like, I can guess like what happens. Yeah. If you break it down, yeah. it's, yeah, it's simple. Or some people say they're allergic to gravity. They stand <laughs> up and their heart rate and they get all these symptoms. And that's what people say. <laughs> that's quite a cool way of yeah. like, naming it. I quite like yeah. that. And what made you think that something serious was going on? Like, what was your first sign? Well, when I first had long COVID, I just felt really tired. But that wasn't, I didn't think too much of it. It was when my heart rate started getting faster and I would come home, come home from school and I would lay on the floor for hours. Oh. That was it. <laughs> or what I said to you when I just came to your house, I yeah. slept. I then went out the next day, came home and I passed out. Mm -hmm. That's the point where we were like, I need There's to go to A&E and yeah. <laughs> figure out what's wrong with me. How do you manage your symptoms? I manage my symptoms. I try and drink two or three litres mm -hmm. of water a day. I wear compression socks a lot of the time. That just keeps the blood flowing through me. I, what else do I do? I drink leucocytes mm -hmm. a lot of the time, the electrolytes and a high salt diet too. And what symptoms do you get? I I have about 40 symptoms all together. <laughs> so a few of my main ones, exhaustion, fast heart rate, blood pooling in my legs, my legs just go blue. I've got like a lot of stomach problems, mm -hmm. so I feel sick a lot of the time. Yeah. Stomach aches a lot of the time. I'm headache a lot of headaches but from my brain scan that I had the problems are like all over my brain <laughs> no, not just no, just that little section is yeah. all over and how has POTS impacted your education I know you answered it a bit earlier but like yeah it's 
really impacted my education. I get a lot of brain fog and memory loss. So if I learn something, it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> but there's no even it's gone. Don't bother remembering. Yeah. I if I start a math GCSE right now, I reckon I'll fail it. Mm -hmm. But I can't keep information in, so that's affects my education and why I do why not now. Okay. So because you don't do you like still get exhausted by doing all the arcs? It's a lot of like concentration. Yeah. yeah. But is it better than doing like yeah. maths English? Definitely. It doesn't require as much concentration, mm -hmm. but I'd still get exhausted. I get exhausted from just sitting here as well. Like <laughs> the natural body processes mm -hmm. make me tired. So <laughs> let alone learning maths and English. And how has it impacted your day-to-day -day life? It's impacted my day-to-day -day life a lot. Even even something simple is just getting out of bed. Mm -hmm. I would sit up and I can't see. Ah. Or I would put a jumper on and lifting my arms above my head makes me dizzy. Mm -hmm. So it's even small things like that, but again, can't change it. Yeah, so, so like you just wouldn't think that something like that would like change anything. Mm -hmm. And then it's just like made you not yeah. be able to get on with your day or you need to like, yeah. take a break. What other simple tasks would you not be able to do now? Um, something like unloading the dishwasher, putting cups in the cupboard. Mm -hmm. I can't lift my hands, or well, raise my arms in the cupboard. Even washing my hair, mum has to do it a lot of the time for me. <laughs> Are you on any medication yet to help with your symptoms or with POTS in general? I'm not, not yet. Hopefully when I see a cardiologist, I will be. I will have, hopefully have medication to slow my heart rate down, but Again, not yet. Yeah, so why haven't they given you any yet? There's a certain requirement. You have to reach, you, your heart rate can't be too slow when it's resting. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you get medication and it slows down more, that's also dangerous. Yeah, that doesn't sound very good. Yeah, so I had a 48 hour heart monitoring mm -hmm. and the results from that will give me an appointment and then I can talk about medication. I think it's get some medication <laughs> and can get awesome. better soon. Yeah. So what was the 48 hour heart monitor, what did, what did that like include? I literally just had this monitor stuck on my chest, 48 hours, it was so itchy. Just don't need to complain about don't that. Don't recommend. <laughs> don't recommend. But it was quite cool actually, it had a little thing obviously monitored your heart rate and when you have a symptom you have to touch it that's cool and then write it down and they can match what gets your heart rate up and give them an understanding of your heart rate that's interesting and, yeah it's so then they can like see like when it happens yeah they, yeah and then you would you write down what caused the symptoms yeah like so like i've actually got a list on my phone <laughs> to keep track of it it was like i stood up couldn't see had to write that down and touch my thing and then obviously that gets my heart rate up standing mm. up so yeah they can see that they've just got a list of me saying i stood up i stood up i got something out of the cupboard well thank you for that jess welcome learned some stuff yeah about thanks pots. thanks for doing this about pots you're welcome i thought not many people know what pots is or like haven't even heard of it because mm. i hadn't heard of it before you had yeah. it because like, when you're like oh i think i've got pots i was like yeah, even I had not heard of it. Heads. And every time like, we're talking about it, I keep on asking you, like, what is POTS? <laughs> like, I look it up and it makes no sense. <laughs> so hopefully this has put it into a simpler term. There are different tests that everyone can take to find out if they have POTS or not. Some of them include an echocardiogram or a 24 to 48 hour heart monitor, which Jess had. But today we're going to do the active stand test, which is where we'll check her heart rate lying down immediately after standing up, two minutes after standing up, and then five minutes after standing up and we can see the difference from resting heart rate to how much it goes up just by her standing up, which doesn't normally happen that much to someone without POTS. I'm going to set a time of two minutes. Are you ready to stand up? Yes, I am. Okay. Come on up. And what is your heart rate now? So, it obviously takes for a minute. It takes a minute for my watch to catch up, but I can feel my heart rate going. <laughs> I can hear it in my ears too. Just don't pass out on me. I'm not going to pass out. I can't see, but you know. <laughs> 114. Okay. And what's the normal without POTS increase? Without, oh, it's increased by 40 beats per minute nearly. The normal increase is about 10 to 15 beats per minute. My heart rate's now at 137 with 
an increase of about 45 beats per minute. So is that as high as it's going to go? That's as high as it's going to go. Okay, and then are you okay to stand for two minutes? We'll see. Okay, so I'm starting a timer for two minutes to see how much her heart rate will change in the two minutes. That was the timer for the two minutes. What was your heart rate? My heart rate is still at 135, so that's still almost an increase of 50 beats per minute okay. from when I was laying down. And then are you okay to do an extra three minutes to see yep. if up to five? We'll go for it. Yeah. Keep my heart rate down. And that was five minutes standing up. What's your heart rate now? My heart rate is still at 128 beats per minute. It's slowly it's going down, but I don't think it's going to go any lower than this. Mm. And then if you sit down, will it go to like... If I sit down, down it's, yeah. Normally when I'm sat down, it's around 80 beats per minute. So that's my normal. And what's the highest it's ever been? Highest it's ever been is about 210. Which is not great yeah, considering my maximum high. should be about 205. So, you know. And my highest it's ever been while I've been laying down is about 190 something. Which is a lot for laying down considering you're a lot for literally laying down. Just, like breathing. Yep. <laughs> just existing. <laughs> yep. Wow. Thank you for that, Jess. That was very. Wow. I'm joined with Claire Heather, who is Jess's mum. And she's gonna tell us more about how like pots hasn't just affected Jess and it's affected like the whole family. So how has Jess having pots affected you? As a family, it's restricted the fact that we don't go out anymore. We don't do anything really because she's too tired to go out. So our family life has changed a lot for that reason. Personally, it's made me a little bit sad that she's like she is. And that we're doing everything we can to help her, but at the moment, it's not changing, is it? Well, it was just like before pots. Like, was she like active, or she like, was, she was, was like a drastic change in her? Yes, she was the craziest, wackiest child you'd ever known in your life. Always nice. doing TikTok <laughs> dances in the kitchen. Thanks. <laughs> she loved dancing. She loved gymnastics. She used to swim. She's still tumbling and just generally out walking her dogs every day. And now she's not walked her dogs, what, how many? A year, I would say. Yeah. Um, a year. So yeah, she's not the person she was. What changes have you had to make to your family life to suit Jess's needs? Well, one of the changes we're going to have to make is buy a new sofa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that she's got somewhere to lay down. Obviously had to buy a bigger car so that we can get a wheelchair in if we need to go out somewhere. You um, need work early a lot for appointments. I do need work early a lot to pick me up from college. I'm, picking, I'm <laughs> in, forever in my car picking her up. Trying to get her to the hours that she goes to college that she's not having to worry about having to travel home and so yeah I seem to sit in my car a lot of the time. Sorry. Whereas <laughs> I would have just sent her on the train or the bus, it would have been get yourself there and back. But Was it difficult to come to terms with the fact that your daughter has a chronic illness? 
I don't think any of us have come to terms with it. I don't think. Well, although we are three down, what, what, three years down the line? Yeah. Nearly three years down the line. Because it's not an illness that can be treated, it's hard to come to terms with because you know that potentially it can never end and this yeah. could be it forever. It's just the unknown, the uncertainty of what's going to happen. But it could end. It could end. Let's be positive. <laughs> it could end. I mean, we know, I know people who, whose daughter's friends have had POTS and they're completely well now. Mm -hmm. They can go to university. But equally, we got, or Jessica has got, long COVID added onto that. So it's like two different things. What's making her worse and what's not? Or is it both things together that's making you more unwell? So it's not hard to come to terms with because it's for her a complete change of life, for us a complete change of life and where does it go from here? Are you hopeful for the future that she'll have a good recovery because of the stories of the other people or do you just think like it will be like this forever? You have to hope it's going to get better. We have to go with it, we just have to go with it but there are times even you like you're like, I'm bored, I'm bored you're of life, bored, I want to and go I'm out. just, and that's hard to hear her say things like that, or every night she'll say, oh, I feel unwell, and that's hard, isn't it? It's like, I don't want that life for her, mm. but I can't change it. Yeah. I, do, I have to be hopeful that she will get better. It's, POTS has been around for a little while now, and there is no cure, but... For somebody of Jessica's age that has it, they can grow out of it. So we're hopeful. And have you received or looked for any support through any charities or anything? Yeah, I haven't really have we. I mean, we've looked at Pops UK. We've read lots of Pops UK website stuff. I mean, I get a lot of support. I do a. It's a 13 to 17 year old. What is it? It's, it's like called peer support groups. Yeah, so it's like a video call of about 10 of us with pops around the same nice. age and yeah, just talk about, talk about everything really. It's, it, they do it for like different, like you're 30 to 17 year olds aren't you? Or they do newly diagnosed support groups. Yeah. So for Jessica, yes she's done that sort of thing, but for me as a parent I've only looked at the website to find things that are like useful or consultants that specialise in POTS and basically how she should be living her life with POTS. Mm. Otherwise I would have known, other than that website, I would have known nothing about POTS. But yeah, I found POTS UK website really helpful. Yeah, yeah I found that helpful when I was like looking up about it because it does it in like simple terms. Mm, and it then does. Just, like, there's different things about it as well. And also reading other people's stories. Mm. That was helpful. And the fact, you know, some people actually have it worse than you. Mm. They have really tough life, and I know yours is, in terms of yours is more your chronic fatigue. But there are people that have to go into hospital and have to have fluids, and so in a way, it's you can weigh up. You know, actually, yes, we Jessica does have pots, but it's not at an extreme level. It could be worse. And how did you feel before Jess was diagnosed and then after she was diagnosed? The fact that after you had COVID, wasn't it? It was like, what, what's going on, basically? Yeah, because everything was, there was, it was just weird. Every time she stood up, it was like, oh, I can't see. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Hanging onto door frames and, and stuff like that. And we thought, okay, it's just COVID, it's going to pass. And then it didn't pass. And then you'd had, what, 100% attendance at school. And then when it got to that November, it was like, you'd wake up and go, wasn't it? You'd cry. I don't want to go to school. I'm not going to school. Yeah. So also was, because you were trying to force me into school. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> because you'd always been... Do you know what I mean? It's, it was an important time. The fact it was happening as you were, like, just going into your GCSE years was a mm. bit, you know... But the fact that after a little bit, yeah. After we found out what it was, for me it was 
more accepting to go, okay, well, obviously I know you're unwell. Not that I didn't think you were a faker, <laughs> but... <laughs> it was like it for this long, well done. <laughs> that is impressive. It was like you genuinely got something wrong with you. So in a way, it's like oh, thank goodness. But equally, the frustration is that there's not something a magical cure. In some cases, POTS is developed after an infection or an immunisation. Jess and Lottie both had COVID at the same time. Jess has turned into long COVID, and Lottie was fine after COVID. So, what was your experience with COVID like? I'd say my experience with COVID wasn't as bad as everyone else's and like what you see in the news. I still think it was like more just like a cold, maybe a bit worse, maybe a bit like my symptoms were a bit more prolonged than like when I normally have a cold. But I'd say mm, I had like sore throat, like blocked nose. My taste and my smell were the, the things that went and like took a couple weeks to bring back but apart from that I wouldn't say like it's like it really affected me or like it was my worst illness of the year or anything like that. And how was that different to your experience? Mine was similar but I definitely had more fatigue afterwards. I can remember a week after I actually could leave the house that I went for a walk and I was I was exhausted. I couldn't do it. But apart from that it was it was like a cold for me as well. Just and more prolonged and a little bit worse. And what is it like having a friend with POTS? Um, I'd say um, maybe socially it's a bit different but obviously just still like, the same person, same person I've known for like 12 years, it's not going to change. But I think the only thing that like the big thing is that we don't see each other as often anymore. I mean we used to like see each other well every day at school and then like a couple times after school as well. But now, like, obviously, like our timetables are a bit clashed. But even when we do have a gap where we're both free, like, it's not always like possible because Jess isn't feeling well. So it affects like plans and like even like birthday presents. I'll be like, oh, well, why don't we like get her an experience to go here? And then it's like, oh, but it's too unpredictable and where like she's going to be okay or she's going to feel really awful. And it's just like, yeah. And have you had to adapt anything to fit Jess's needs? Mm, I'd say like again when we're going out maybe I've got to think of a few more different things like is it there going to be places to sit how long is it going to take stuff like that or like will she need an extra drink when we're going or like would they not allow drinks there it's like it's just like more like questions in my head more like than like physical things of yeah. like oh I have to you know do this and that. Oh, actually, we we sold packets from somewhere yeah, once. When we go when I go KFC, I always pick up a few extra, <laughs> put it in my pocket, and then I forget. And then a couple months later, I've got some packets in my in my pocket, and I'm like, what? Well, what have I got then? Yeah. Thank you, Dottie. Very informative. Very helpful. You're welcome. To conclude, POTS is a little-known illness that has major effects on people's lives. From speaking with Jess, we can see how much POTS has affected her day-to-day -day life and how challenging it can be for a teenager to live with. I got in touch with POTS UK and they hold many fundraisers throughout the year. One of them is Walk and Talk for POTS. This is going to be held on the 18th of May 2024 and you can sign up by going to the POTS UK website. If you need support, there are many different charities which can provide advice, including POTS UK, the Autonomic Charitable Trust and UK POTSies. I've learned a lot by speaking to Jess and the people around her as well as speaking to the charities. I hope you've learnt something about POTS too.